we want to evaluate the indefinite integral. Looking at the integrand, notice how we have the square root of 25 minus x squared. And because this fits the form of the square root of a squared minus x squared, we can determine the antiderivative using trig substitution and let x equal a sine theta, or in our case, since a squared equals 25, x equals five sine theta. So we will be using trig substitution to find the antiderivative. In another video though, I'll show how we can use basic u substitution to determine the antiderivative as well. So here we'll let x equal five sine theta, and therefore differential x is equal to five cosine theta d theta. Now let's model angle theta using this right triangle here, where this is angle theta. Notice how if x equals five sine theta, then sine theta would be equal to x divided by five. So the opposite side would be x, the hypotenuse would be five, and this leg here would be equal to the square root of five squared minus x squared, or 25 minus x squared. And now let's perform substitution and write the integral in terms of theta. So we'd have the integral of x cubed would be five sine theta to the third. And then the square root of 25 minus x squared should simplify to a cosine theta, or in our case, five cosine theta. Let's go ahead and show that. We'd have the square root of 25 minus x squared, which would be 25 sine squared theta. So if we factor the 25 out, we'd have 25 times the quantity one minus sine squared theta, which equals cosine squared theta, which does equal five cosine theta. So we have a factor of five cosine theta. And then differential x equals five cosine theta d theta. Let's factor out the coefficient. Here we have five cubed, that's 125, times five times five, which would be 3,125, times the integral of, we'd have sine cubed theta times cosine squared theta d theta. When we have an odd number of sines and an even number of cosines, we want to save one factor of sine, convert the remaining sines to cosines. So let's go ahead and do that. We'd have 3,125 times the integral of one factor of sine theta. We still have sine squared theta, which we'll convert to one minus cosine squared theta. We still have cosine squared theta here. Now the reason this helps is if we let u equal cosine theta, the differential u would be negative sine theta d theta. So let's perform that substitution on the next slide. So again, if we let u equal cosine theta, then differential u is equal to negative sine theta d theta. So we could say that negative differential u equals sine theta d theta. So now I'll write this in terms of u. So we'll have 3,125 times the integral of, again, sine theta d theta is equal to negative differential u. Let's factor out the negative. Here's our differential u. And then one minus cosine squared theta would be one minus u squared. The cosine squared theta would be u squared. Let's go ahead and distribute. So we'd have u to the second minus u to the fourth. And now we'll find the antiderivative with respect to u. So we'd have u to the third divided by three minus u to the fifth divided by five plus c. Now let's go ahead and write this back in terms of theta. Once we have it in terms of theta, we'll write it back in terms of x. So here we have negative 3,125 times, this would be one third. Remember u is equal to cosine theta, so we'd have cosine cubed theta 
and then minus one fifth cosine to the fifth theta plus c. Now we'll go back and use our right triangle to determine cosine theta. Cosine th Remember, cosine theta would be equal to the ratio of the adjacent side of the hypotenuse. So cosine theta equals the square root of 25 minus x squared divided by five. So this would give us negative 3,125 times one third, and then we have the square root of 25 minus x squared divided by five raised to the third minus one fifth times the square root of 25 minus x squared divided by five to the fifth. Now we need to simplify this. Remember that 3,125 is equal to five to the fifth. So when we distribute negative 3,125 here, Notice here we have five to the third in the denominator, and this would be negative five to the fifth in the numerator. So this ends up being negative 25 thirds times, now the square root can be written to the one half power, so we would have 25 minus x squared, and the exponent would be one half times three, or three halves. And now for the second product here, notice how we have five to the fifth in the denominator, so that's gonna simplify with 3,125, but we still have one factor of five here in the denominator, and we would have a negative times a negative, so it's going to be plus one-fifth, and this is gonna be the quantity 25 minus x squared. The exponent would be one-half times five, or five-halves, and then plus c. So this would be our antiderivative. I hope you found this helpful.